God has no barrenness, not even the appearance of turning. He is always the same, no matter the season. The Bible says that everything there is a season and a time and a purpose under the sun, but that's us human folks. God isn't subject to your season. God hasn't reached the nadir of a spring. God doesn't have to be worried about the falls, winters of his life. That God isn't subject to the season. That, that God, although he had set times to Abraham, but he's the same God that he is on yesterday, that he's going to be on today, that he's going to be on tomorrow. So, talking about God, that he is always the same no matter the season. That his character, his mode of being, his purposes, what he was a million years ago, he will be on today, and he'll be that on tomorrow. That literally he's not subject to variableness. When we talk about variableness, we talk about change. We talk about alter, that God is never under the in the alteration roof of time. That no one gets to hear on God and make him longer. That no one gets to take a few inches out of God and make him shorter. That literally God is not subject to change. That he's never in the sowing booth of time. That God never has to call an alteration person. That he's the same God that he was on yesterday. He's going to be on today that he's going to be on tomorrow. So whatever changes and reverses may come, only apply to your life. God will stay the same. God's not in trouble. God is not in the financial fix. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, and the world that would you uh, dwell there in it. The Bible also says that, that, that God has the cattle on a thousand hills. So God's not in any financial trouble. That God is not subject to sickness like we are. We need to put our hope in God, who's the same. He's the constant. He's the Father of life, in whom there is no barrenness. That there's no situation or circumstance that you can introduce to change our God. The same God that He was a thousand years ago, He's going to be a thousand years on the future. He's going to be unto you right now. That He's the Father of life, and we serve a God that does not change. Uh, God, that God is the same. The faces of the great, uh, the faces, the fierce faces of the great foes that we face will change, but God will stay the same. That that every day new foes will pop up over and over again, but the same God that took care of that last foe will take care of this foe that you have right now. He's the Father of Life, and literally, there's no, He's not subject to change. Read through the scripture and sit in there. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. That God is not dishing out temptation to bring you down. Now, God will send you a test to promote you, but he is not the author of any temptation. He said, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and, and entice that lust. And, and, and sometimes it's a, a lust or sin, a rebellion, are things that come from our flesh, that we lean on our flesh far too much, and that our flesh gets us in some of the awful messes that we're in. Verse 15, then when lust have conceived, when lust has gone through its pregnancy term, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. The scriptures declare in Romans 6 and 23 that the wages of sin is death. Verse 16, do not err, my beloved brother. Brethren, every good and every perfect gift is from the above and coming down from the Father. The good that is in your life comes down from the Father of light. It is not because of you so cute and you so fine. It's not because of your uh, astonishing pull or do. It's because the goodness of God, that God is just determined that he's going to rain down his goodness, that he sends goodness and mercy to walk with you every day of your life. That literally every good thing that you have going on in your life comes from God. Uh, and he says, it comes down from the Father of life, the Creator of life, with whom there is no fairness, that there's no circumstance that can undercut your God, that nobody can pull the table. 
people out from under your God, that your God will eternally turn the tables on all of your enemies, and there's nothing that they can do it. Your God simply is. Neither shall nor turn. That he's the same God that he was on yesterday, that he's going to be today, that he's going to be tomorrow. If you read anywhere in scriptures where the champions of faith, that they, they came and he showed up for them in tight spots, in tight moments, and he showed up for them, he'll do the same thing for you. The old folks sung that song, that there is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same thing for you. I'll tell you right now that God is still the same. The same way that God took the mouth of Moses and he turned a man who stuttered and, and, and sent him a stick and he turned down the most powerful language, a uh, powerful leader of his particular day. That he can do that for you. The same God that took Joseph, who had been in slavery and thrown into a prison. That God can take you with all of your multiple convictions and God can bless you and send you to a high place. The same God that shows up in lion's den. The same God that showed up in the fiery furnace can show up in that spot that you're in so much trouble. That he's literally the father of life in whom there's no barrenness, neither shadow of turn. He's, in other words, what the writer is saying, he's my God too. What he's done before, he will do again. The same God that you can, if you're going to put your hope, your hope shall be built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And, and we put our hope in the Father's life. God bless you.